Oh my goodness. Oh, it's so good. It's so flaky. <laughs> What's up? It's Kat and Deb from Two Market Girls. Welcome back to another vegan recipe. And today we are making a highly anticipated recipe, at least from Kat. So you should all be just as excited that it has finally arrived. Now I have been working on this recipe for months, like so long. I've never, this is, I've never tested a recipe more than this. It has taken so long, but I'm very happy with the results because I didn't think I would be able to do it, but I did it. Yeah, see like it's such a triumph. It's such a victory because not only is it super delicious, but you put so much work into making it happen and now we all get to enjoy it and I'm just so excited. And also what's even more exciting is that I was doing a lot of research and I have not been able to really find a vegan version of these yet. So I'm very excited to be able to bring these to the world of veganism because we've been missing out. All right, Kat, tell us all about them. Okay, so I made something called pastetsis. Pastetsis are a Maltese pastry um, that's basically like, I don't really know how to describe the dough. I think it's most similar to like a strudel dough, kind of, mm -hmm. in like the making and all that kind of stuff, but a very flaky dough with one of many fillings. The filling that is my favorite is the one I did today, which is a ricotta filling. And it is so good. This is like something that I have grown up eating like forever and when I, I remember specifically when I went vegan I was so sad because I was like I'll never be able to have these again because like they are like traditionally filled with like so much lard and fat and all this kind of stuff that vegans cannot eat but then I don't know what happened like earlier this year I was like you know what I just want to make them vegan I'm gonna figure out how to do it so I did it. I love it and I was hearing about it for so so long and now I finally make them, made them too, but I feel like we should just get into the recipe, right? Definitely. All right, make sure you're subscribed to the channel, but we gotta go make this. It's a process, but it is so, so worth it. So to make your vegan pasetzi, we're first gonna start off by making a combination of butter and shortening. So we're using vegan butter and some vegetable shortening. We're going to add them to a bowl and just using a fork, mash them together and mix them until they're all combined. This is what's gonna give our pastry it's nice flaky layers once that has all been mixed you can set that in a fr in the fridge until you need it next up we're going to make our dough to a tan mixer with a dough hook we're going to add in some all-purpose flour and salt and just kind of mix that until it's all combined then we're going to add in some olive oil and a little bit of water and then mix that using the dough hook and with the mixer on medium to low we're going to slowly add in the remaining water until you get a smooth, not sticky dough. The trick here is you want to be able to knead the dough on a work surface without having to put any flour on it. So it needs to be pr not dry, but not sticky. If you're seeing that the dough hasn't really come together, there's still some loose flour, just add in a quick like sprinkle of water, not too much, because you don't want this dough to be sticky. Just add in a little extra water if needed. Once the dough has come together for the most part, you're going to turn that out onto a clean surface and then knead it for just a couple minutes until it's nice and smooth. Now, if you're noticing that it is sticking to your table, this dough will be, it's too sticky to make pastetsi, so you'll have to add a little extra flour. Or if you're noticing that there is still some dry flour and it hasn't all been incorporated in and it hasn't created this nice smooth ball, add in just like a sprinkle of water on your, from your fingers. You wanna knead that for about two to four minutes. And then once you get a nice round smooth ball, you're gonna take a little bit of that butter and shortening mixture just in your hands, about a teaspoon or two, and then you're just going to rub it all over the dough ball. This is gonna help keep it from drying out. Then you're gonna place that dough ball back in the mixing bowl and cover with a kitchen towel and let that set for at least an hour, but I would highly recommend, if you can, letting it set overnight on the counter. You will get the best results if you can let it set as long as possible upwards to about 12 hours. So next up, if you're letting the dough rest overnight, you can stop here and then the next morning do this step. But if you're just letting it rest about an hour or so, you can move on to this next step now. So while the dough rests, you can make the ricotta filling. So to a large bowl, we're gonna crumble some extra firm tofu into really small pieces. Then we're gonna set that aside. Then to a high speed blender, we're going to add in some sliced almonds, some lemon juice, miso paste, salt, nutritional yeast, 
olive oil, non-dairy milk, and silken tofu, and a little sprinkle of black pepper. Then we're gonna blend that until it's nice and creamy and smooth. Then we're going to pour that silken tofu mixture into the bowl with the crumbled tofu and just toss that until it's all combined and you get a ricotta-like texture. All right, so next up, we're going to start making the layers of, for our dough. So you need a really, really large surface for this. I'm using my kitchen table. Make sure it's completely clean and completely clear. Then you're going to take a little bit of that butter and shortening mixture and just kind of spread a very thin layer across your work surface so that nothing sticks. Then you're gonna place the rest of dough on your surface and using your hands, just press it out a little bit, just slightly. Then using a rolling pin, you're gonna roll out the dough as thin as you can possibly get it. It should start to be translucent. So what that means is whatever work surface you're working on, you should be able to start seeing it through the dough. So I'm using my wood grain table. I start looking to see where I get the, start seeing the wood grain coming through. That's how you know you have it thin enough. Now, rolling dough this thin, it is bound to have some breakage and some holes. That is totally okay. This dough is forgiving in that sense. So if it rips a little bit, totally fine. Then using your hands, so your hands get really messy in this recipe, using your hands, you're gonna scoop a handful of that butter and shortening mixture and spread a thin layer across your entire rolled out dough, edge to edge. You should have no part of it that doesn't have butter and shortening on it. Then starting from one end, you're going to slowly roll the dough into a pinwheel like you would do cinnamon rolls, but you wanna pull and stretch the dough as you roll it. Again, if holes start forming because of this, that is totally fine. What this does is essentially gives you as many rolls as possible and gets the dough as thin as possible so you get really nice, crispy, flaky layers. So keep rolling that pastry until it's a finished like cinnamon roll type roll. Uh, and then you're going to coil that log that you just made. So as if it's kind of like a snail shell, you're just going to coil it and then again, take a little bit of extra of that butter and shortening mix and just brush it all over it so that it doesn't dry out while it rests for a second time. So you're gonna place this in a dish, cover with a towel and let it rest for at least an hour. And if you can do longer, do it. I made, I let mine rest for about an hour and a half to two hours. All right, once your dough has fully rested for at least an hour, you're gonna start preheating your oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit while you get the pistetsis ready for the oven. So what you want is to cut the dough into about one and a half inch pieces, one, one and a half to two inch pieces. And then you're gonna start rolling out your dough. So. There's a very traditional way of doing this. I am really bad at the traditional way of doing this. So I have come up kind of, not with my own method, with a method that I've seen somebody else do that was much easier for me to do. And I got the look and layers that I really wanted. So basically what I did is I used two pieces of parchment, one on the bottom and one on the top. And then I added, I added a chunk of the dough that I cut, that one and a half inch piece, put it on one of the parchment pieces, then put a second parchment piece over top and squished it down into a disc with my hands. And then you're going to take a rolling pin and roll it out even thinner, making sure those edges get super thin and stretched out without making any holes in it this time. You want it to be pretty big so that you can fold the dough over on itself when adding the filling. So really get that nice and thin, not as thin as we were doing it when we rolled it out initially, but thin enough so that it's about a quarter of an inch ma thick max. And then again, it might, it might recoil back once you let the parchment paper off. That's totally fine. You can stretch it out with your fingers a little bit or use the table to your advantage. So what you wanna do once you have it up, you wanna look for the side that has the most beautiful spiral in it. So you can start seeing the layers and put that face down. You want the least nice coils inside. That's gonna be the in where you put the filling. So then you're gonna put a scoop of your ricotta filling that you just made in the center, and then you're gonna take one side, fold it over the ricotta filling, and then take the other side and fold it over again and pinch the ends together. Then you're going to repeat that until all your pistetsis are made. This should make about 20 pistetsis, give or take. You're gonna place those on a lined baking sheet. And then using a brush, you're going to brush on more of that butter and shortening mixture just over top so that they get a nice deep golden brown color. And then we're gonna place those pistetsis in the oven to bake for at least 25 minutes. You really want them to be a deep golden brown and make sure they're cooked all the way through so you get really delicious flaky layers. Then you pop them out of the oven and you're done. These are best enjoyed fresh. If you don't think you'll eat the whole 20 in the same day, I would highly recommend either having the batch from the beginning or once you get to the stage where the pistachios are formed before baking them, just place those in the freezer and let them freeze entirely. And then when you want a pistachio or two, you can take them out and bake them right from frozen.
Ready for these flaky layers? It's, yeah, honestly, the flakiness, I can't believe that I did this too. It's, it's one of the things when I was researching this, because full disclosure, like I've been eating these for like my entire life, but I've never made them before, even before going vegan. We've always bought them from bakeries here in Toronto, bought them frozen and baked them at home. So I've never really made them. So I didn't know how much effort went into them. And like, I looked at that, I was like, wait, how do, how do you get flaky layers from this? Because you handle the dough so much. And I was so confused, but honestly, it is, it's so good. Like, I've never been prouder making a dough before. Oh, so exciting. Okay. Ready? Let's see. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Oh, it's so good. It's so flaky. Oh, they make me so happy. This is my childhood, Devin. This is, like, this is the definition of my childhood. It's like perfectly flaky and then I love when I get to the filling too. Mm. It's so good. Now, again, full disclosure, they're not the most beautiful looking pastry, like my version of them. Um, there is like a very traditional technique to make them and I tried for weeks to do it and I cannot do it. So I found a way to make them that works for me and still gets a very, very similar result. And they're like my Maltese mother approved, so. She, she even said, I gave her these ones that I made, like, today. And she said, you would ha like, most people would have a hard time knowing these are vegan. So, I'm pretty proud. That's the best feeling. Yeah, it truly is. I did a ricotta filling. That is my favorite, by far. There also is versions with, like, mushy peas or, like, curry peas. And then there also is a version of, like, peas and, like, ground beef. I have never liked those ones. <laughs> even before I was vegan, never liked those. So I've always made the ricotta ones. Like these are my favorite by far. I mean, can't go wrong with like a cheesy type filling. Can never go wrong. Never. And honestly, I really like this ricotta. Like this also took, the ricotta filling also took a really long time because in these, it's like a very basic filling. Normally it's just ricotta and like an egg. And like, that's about it. Some, like there are some variations here and there. So I was like, wow, this actually just has to taste like cheese. There's really no flavor to it. It's just, it tastes like ricotta. So the filling took a really long time too. Yeah, so Catherine has worked long and hard on these. So we really hope that you go and enjoy them. It could be, the process is a little bit intimidating for first time and Catherine actually pre-filmed her doing it for me to watch so I would know how to do it. And I don't think I could have done it without the video, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, I hi like even me, when I was trying to figure out how to make these, I watched so many videos of people making them because like it is, it's really hard to t like explain in writing the process. If you're just reading the recipe, something will go wrong, I promise you that. So I highly recommend if you go to make these, have our video at the ready to watch because it is a really intense, like it's a forgiving dough once you get into it, but you have to get the beginning steps right. <laughs> hmm. I think we should dedicate the comments section to just like flaky pastries and flaky doughs and flaky deliciousness. Yeah, definitely. Like that's still one of my favorite types of, even if it's a savory or a dessert, it's just like that, oh, crunchy flakiness is one of my favorite things. So let's talk about the flaky treats that you like. <laughs> Yes. Whether or not they've been veganized, tell us that as well. Or if you plan to veganize them, like let's just talk about flaky foods. <laughs> flaky foods are the best foods. Also, I really want to know if anyone's ever tried pistazzi's before. Because, again, like Maltese food isn't necessarily big everywhere. It's decent, like, like a lot of people know it in Toronto because there's a large Maltese population in Toronto. But I would be curious if anyone's tried pistazzi's before because they're one of my favorite things and they're one of the things that I didn't realize were uncommon because I'm Maltese and grew up eating them. So I didn't realize that most people probably have no idea what they are. <laughs> As usual, the recipe will be linked in the description box below. There's also a link to our podcast. It comes out every Monday it's called Camera Eats First. We talk about veganism, how we make recipes like this, how we run our blog, we do some trending news, we talk about some food content. It's a really good time, so go give it a listen. There's also a link to our Patreon community. Our patrons are a lovely group of people who help support the work that we do. And in exchange, we give them some bonus content. So if you're able to support us that way, we really appreciate it. But if not, that's okay. Give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, comment, and share it with somebody who might enjoy some more flaky foods in their life. Everybody.
I just like I really hope people enjoy these because I love these so much like it feels like I can truly actually just like be vegan and enjoy everything that I want because like this was like the only thing Whoa. left really I can wait for everything else this is this will keep me happy <laughs> Just like the ASMR potential of these right now. Right? <laughs> the crunch. Oh. Mm, 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 mm. I'm so happy. <laughs> oh my god, it's so good. 